Hi guys, this is Drew Brashler with DBB Audio. I'm here with the Behringer Wing, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about mix buses, subgroups, and how we can use those for our benefit. Now, on the Behringer Wing, there are 16 stereo mix buses, which is a lot in comparison to the X32, which is going to be 16 mono mix buses. So if you were wanting to do some stereo processing of, say, some drums, you would actually have to pair one and two of the mix buses together on the Behringer Wing, they are stereo or mono. You can configure them in either way. And so with our mix buses, typically we can either use these for in-ear monitors with a stereo setup or a floor wedge for a mono setup. And I actually have two videos about that earlier in the series, so make sure to go check those out. We can also use this as a subgroup, which I'm going to show you the benefits of doing that today. Now, with these mix buses, we can actually send these directly to a main bus. So if we are wanting to do some group compression or some group EQ or some global stuff to a set of channels, instead of sending it directly to the left-right bus, send it through a subgroup. And so let's go ahead and show you how to set that up right now. So I have my bus masters here, and I have my bus master 1. So I'm going to go ahead and press home and we can see that this is currently set up in a stereo configuration. If I wanted this to be in a mono configuration, I would simply press mono. And if I was wanting to make this a subgroup, meaning it would be a summation point for all the channels that I want to have go into this, all I would have to do is press subgroup. Now there's also a benefit of using a post fader setup. Now post fader, you can act as a subgroup if you're sending everything at unity gain. And I'll actually show that to you later in this video with my drum group that I'll set up with a post fader send. Now the other thing that you can do with post fader is actually set up your reverb or delay sends directly in this bus. And there's going to be a future video explaining how to do this in more detail. But with our subgroups, we would go ahead and click subgroup. And then we would want this subgroup to go to our mains. So we actually need to send this to our mains by pressing here and then pressing on the main. So now if I apply any channels to this subgroup, after I turn it up to Unity, it will pass through this subgroup and go directly to the mains, which is going to be very useful for us. So let's actually see how this works with drums in using some subgroup processing. I'm going to take all of my drums into a single drum subgroup, and then I'm going to take my kick, snare, and toms through an additional subgroup, apply some very heavy compression, some very heavy EQ tailoring, and then add those two things back in together and get an amazing sound out of those two things. I have a song pulled up on my DAW over here playing into my Behringer Wing through the USB port on the back of the console. So let's go ahead and take a listen. So I have all my drums here. I have my Kick 52, my 901 on the inside. Snare top, snare bottom, hats, rack tom, floor tom, and overheads. And so what I'm going to do with these microphones is I'm going to send them into a subgroup. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'm going to stop the music here, and I'm going to go into each channel and assign it into my subgroup for drums which my subgroup for drums is sitting over on bus 9, and then my parallel compression is going to be on bus 10. So let's go ahead and assign these drums to bus 9 first. I am going to go into each channel and turn them on into our bus 9. Now I'm using this as a post fader setup rather than a subgroup. Earlier in the video, I showed you how we set up mix bus one as a subgroup. And if I was wanting to keep that as a group, we can see that right here. There is an on or an off. Now the benefit of doing this through a post fader send is I can actually tailor the amount of volume that I want coming from this fader going into this parallel processing setup that I'm doing here. So I'm going to apply on for all of the drums. Now the next thing that I want to do is I want to remove these channels from going directly to my band bus. And so I need to do that in the main section here. So 
Now when I press play, what's going to happen is these drum channels are going to go through my mix bus 9 and then to my main bus. So I'm going to unmute these. Okay, sounds like normal. I have full volume control over the drums right here. I also have the ability to EQ the entire drum set at the same time, which might be useful for you in some situations. So let's go ahead and add in the parallel portion of this. Now, like I said, I am going to be sending my kick drum, my snare drum, and my toms to this parallel processing channel. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So I'm going to select and turn on. I am not going to turn on my hi-hat or my overhead into this parallel portion. Now let's go take a look at the processing that I have going on in this parallel drum bus. I have a no stressor, which is applying a massive amount of gain reduction with a 10 to 1 ratio, a fairly fast attack time, and a fairly fast release time. Then that is going into an EQ that is doing some massive cuts in the mids and bringing up the lows and bringing up the highs. And so I'm going to leave this muted and go ahead and pull this down, and we can listen in to what changes in the sound of the drums as I bring this up. Now it's a little hard to sometimes hear this in the context of just the drums. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in the rest of the band here and then we can listen into the drums with the parallel compression on and off. This is just the parallel compression, which we wouldn't hear any of the cymbals, we would just be hearing the drums. Now you can go for a more aggressive sound or a less aggressive sound depending on your type of music that you're mixing. And here's the drums completely flat. So this is one very good useful tool that we can use with the mix buses, either setting them up as a subgroup or a post fader group in the sense that I'm doing it here on the drums. So thank you so much for watching this and stay tuned for the next videos that are coming out on the Behringer Wing.